Over half of all smartphones, both iOS and Android, are infected with keystroke logging software. This is a known fact. People pay these sites for the ability to put their key logging software on your phones. How do you think they make their money? It costs millions of dollars to maintain these massive databases and have the bandwidth to disperse this. And yet, you don't pay. Yes, you're paying. Uh, while you are watching your phone, your phone is watching you. This is just a fact of life. Uh, the operating system is designed specifically to watch you, listen to you, find out where you are in order to help you. It needs to know who your friends are. Um, it needs to know what you're saying in your text messages. Um, it needs to listen to you sometimes. And so you're looking at your phone and, and you have all of these facilities, but it is the world's greatest spy device, designed as a spy device. Now, there's nothing wrong with that as long as the person spying on you is spying on you for benign reasons, meaning maybe they just want to sell you something. But I can choose to say no. But hackers use those same facilities. They are built into the operating system. So if a hacker gets access to those facilities, they may choose to empty my bank account without my permission or knowledge, uh, or to steal my identity, or to start charging things on my credit cards, or if I have a Bitcoin wallet or an Ethereum wallet, they can empty my wallets. Th th this is the facts. This is not science fiction. This is not uh, me being paranoid. The antivirus paradigm is, is no longer functional. It doesn't work. I said this 10 years ago, and, and I'm the person who invented it. So I, I, people should listen. I mean, if I invented it and I, I built the first antivirus company, viruses are not the problem. By the time hackers have planted malware in your system, it's way too late. The hackers spend weeks, months, or sometimes years sniffing around in your system, taking what they want before they even plant malware. But you can find the presence of a hacker in your system so easily. Every hacker has to go through certain steps in order to break into any system and do damage. The first thing they have to do is get through the firewall, and all firewalls have holes. It's impossible to build a firewall that can keep out all hackers. It just can't be done. They have to get through the firewall, and then they have to find out where they are. And so what's on this net? So they sniff every device on the network. You have people, I mean, I've even heard people at Google say that if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. Well, I've never heard anything crazier. It's insane to say, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. We are humans. We are living in an imperfect world. Over half of all smartphones, both uh, iOS and Android, are infected with keystroke logging software. This is a known fact. Every site in the world, if you have ever, I'm sure nobody here has ever looked at it, but if you have, then, um, you have keystroke locking software. How do you think they make their money? See, this is, this is the issue. It costs millions of dollars to maintain these massive databases and have the bandwidth to, to disperse this. And yet, you don't pay. Yes, you are paying. The instant you visit the site, if you have an Android, for example, the site runs a JavaScript which sets the download unauthorized application flag. The very first video that you watch you now, because that's a click through, you clicked, you did something, said yes, oh good, that's yes, I'll do that. Um, downloads, first and foremost, a remote routing function, if it's an iPhone, uh, a remote jailbreaking program. All can be remotely uh, rooted now. After it's rooted, they download a key, a key logger, and all this takes just a matter of seconds. And from that point on, somebody is watching every single one of your keystrokes. Now, people pay these sites for the ability to put their key logging software on your phones. Why? Well, well maybe they're a Bitcoin aficionado and they're, they're gonna see, ah, do you have a Bitcoin wallet like Mycelium or what have you? Yes. Well, this is gonna hang around until you access it and input your, your keys or your passwords and the next day, your wallet's gonna be empty. Or maybe you do online banking, all right? You have a password, you have an application, the very first time you've logged into your bank to check your balance or do anything, they go, thank you very much. And the next day, your bank balance will disappear. Now, why has this not happened to you already? Because hackers are not stupid. In order to take something, they have to download additional software. If they only take four or 500 people's 
bank accounts in one day, then the next day the white hat hackers are going to say, ah, this is how they did it, everybody, you can protect yourself. No, they're going to wait until one day this year or next year and a hundred million people in one day are going to have your bank accounts eradicated. Zero balance or your identity will be stolen or your Bitcoin wallet will be emptied. Uh, or maybe they've been watching your keystrokes to see if, you know, maybe you're saying something to a friend or a lover that maybe could compromise you. Maybe they can blackmail you. If they get lucky, you might be a U United States congressman or a senator. In which case, now not only do they have money, they have power. And the Russian uh, um, cyber mafia and the Chinese cyber mafia are so powerful, they pay literally hundreds of millions of dollars to these sites to allow them to access your smartphone so that at some point they can utilize that. Now you said how secure are they? <laughs> well, they're not. They're not. Neither the, the, uh, uh, the, the alt currency wallets um, nor anything else in the cloud. Because what, what is the cloud? We haven't thought this through people. The cloud is a place where I'm going to store data. I don't know what computer it's on or even what country it's in. I don't know who is managing it and monitoring it and controlling it. I don't know what type of security facilities you have. I know nothing. And I'm willing to put my valuable data there? No. Why would we do that? Now, if it's something I don't care about, that if you steal it, I don't care. It's a list of books I read. You know, I'll just recreate it from the web. But if it's something that matters, it's like saying, We've all agreed now we have secrets, yes? Why don't you let me keep your secrets? Why should you be burdened with having to keep your secrets? I mean, you've got too many stories to tell. Why don't you give it to me and let me manage it for you? Oh, isn't that crazy? And yet that, that's what we're doing with our, quote, secret data. That is data we don't want to have stolen from us or taken or accessed. How valuable to you is Google? How often do you Google something to find out anything? What does it cost you? Zero. Please, nothing is free. I'm thinking people are foolish if you believe you can go onto the internet, sign on to a social media site, and expect to have privacy. That's ridiculous. Uh, how, do, how do these companies make money? Seriously, Google makes money by knowing where you are, what you're buying, who you're with, who your contacts are, who you last talked to, where you're eating your, your dinner. This is how everybody makes money. And to think that you're going to get these free services, seriously, if you want to use free services and you're paying nothing for them, why then are you upset that they're taking the data that you input and selling it? I mean, to expect privacy in this world where hackers can see anything, the government can see anything, um, that our, our telephones, our, our smartphones are designed uh, to spy on us. They have application interfaces that let them access your location, your contacts, who you're calling, um, what you're buying. Why? Because marketers pay a lot of money for that. You know, once you log onto the internet, your privacy is gone. So you have a choice, keep your privacy or go, okay, well, I'm gonna be very careful about what I input. You know, people ask me for my phone number, I just don't give it to them. You know, certain information you do not get, and if I cannot get onto your site, then I'll go somewhere else. Why do we accept smartphones that have the capacity to find my location, turn on my camera, turn on my microphone, look at my contacts, see who I last called, uh, find out what I'm buying on Amazon or what have you. Uh, why do we accept that? Because this makes our life easy. I expect everything that I put into the internet to be taken away. If you put it on the internet, someone's going to get it. It's a fact of life. There's no way to prevent it. So what you put into it, you better expect the world to know. So I don't know, I, I use disinformation. You know, for example, I, I bought a house, in a new place in a foreign country, and I said it was in Dominica. Put photographs in. Well, no, I, I've never been to Dominica, and I do not have a house there. However, those people who are trying to find me are looking for me. I mean, you know, you have to figure it out yourself. Protect yourself by any means possible. Disinformation, no information, limited information. But whatever you put into the internet, it's, it's gone, man. People are going to be looking at it and reading it and watching you. Would any government allow Google, Facebook, Twitter, that, can, that has massive amounts of information on everybody, not just in America, mm -hmm. but in the world, do you think they would allow that just to freely go on, on its way? Of course not. Please, Lord. This is how governments work. You think I'm paranoid? Governments are paranoid. They're all terrified of losing power. Two and a half years ago, someone took 21 million records from the United States First Office of Personnel Management. That means everybody with top secret clearances, uh, everybody who has ever worked for the U.S. government for the past 50 years. Good God Almighty, do you realize what a major coup that would have been? 
uh, an, an active espionage of, of, of the scale of which has never been attempted. And it's, you know, some random person in, in Russia or China probably wandered in and just took it. It's so easy to do. A cyber would be a very inexpensive. I mean, Korea has 2,100 hackers. It's a group of government hackers with the capacity to literally take down any country in the world, including the U.S., by any number of ways, hacking into our power grid, shunting the electricity in such a way that all of our transformers burn out across America. Now, we have no electricity. How do you repair it? I don't know. All of our, uh, all of our repair tools are electrically operated. Everything goes south. We don't have any electricity to run the plants to create the food and can them and ship them so that we can eat. Uh, we, we don't have the, uh, uh, the electricity to create fuel from raw oil. We have no, nothing to run our cars on. Uh, we have no lights, we have no heat. Hospitals are down. We have no emergency services. Think about it. Now, there's no new ever achieve that. There would always be pockets of, of we would still have something, but no. If, if hackers really wanted to attack uh, America, a couple of thousand could bring us down financially. Um, why don't they? We, we probably have the ability to do the same thing to them. But no, this, this is, you know, we have let things get out of control and we've done it because we are lazy.